Okay, that's great. We will start at 8 o'clock. Okay, and this is for, I'm just going to go ahead and start talking. This is for anyone who wants to know how to watch the class and paint at the same time. It's best if you have two different devices. If you don't, you can load, you know, shrink down your canvas and hit the, um, the little chat bubbles in the lower left-hand corner. And if you use the, the chat option to watch along and paint along, you've just got that short little area at the bottom. All right, and I'll see if I can just move along. Okay, I know most of you in the room already know what you're doing, so if you can help anybody who doesn't know what they're doing with simple questions, I can go through this quickly. First of all, I really think everyone should know how to take a screenshot. And you basically want to press both buttons, your sleep-wake button and your home button, at the same time, quickly, like you're taking a picture with a camera. If you hold either one of them for very long, it will turn your iPad off. Once you choose a sketch, you need to choose a resolution, and I want to make sure you understand what resolution is. It's basically just how many pixels wide by how many pixels high your picture is. In general, it's safe to choose the largest resolution if you want the finest detail, and I've got an example here for you.
what you're looking at is the eye of the bumblebee way blown up and that so you see so that you can see the little individual pixels the red dot is to highlight a single pixel and so you can imagine if your paper is made up of more tiny pixels it's going to be a crisper image when you get done than if your picture was made up of five pixels by five pixels I mean that would be very blocky The next thing I want to bring to your attention, you've started your sketch, is your layers. And we're going to go through how to get the image onto your sketch. Um, here I refer to your reference template. That's coming out so bad. Let me try that again. Yay! Layers! So here you can see your layers and I've numbered them for you. When you start any sketch in Sketch Club or you want to load something in, it's going to happen on layer 2 to begin with unless you choose a different layer. So the layer highlighted in blue is the active layer. And it's really handy that stuff starts on layer 2 because that means that we already have layer 1 set aside on the bottom to be our background. And then if you look here, you just, just follow the arrows. The red arrow, you've selected your load image. That's going to take you to your load image menu. In orange, I've highlighted coloring, which will bring up the coloring menu. And there you see B with flower. And when you select B with flower, it will land on layer 2. So this is where we should all be if you're trying to color along with me with your coloring template on layer 2. Now I've artificially expanded your view of the layer menu. We have 10 layers. Our coloring template was on layer 2, but go ahead and slide that up out of the way to say layer 8. Doesn't really matter, just needs to be up out of your way. The next thing I want to talk about is how to get your reference image onto the same screen as what you're working on and let me go ahead and send the reason you want to have your reference image there handy is we're going to use it to select our colors from So what you do again is you shrunk your canvas down in the upper 
left hand corner is the little tiny icon that looks like a picture. When you select that, it will take you to your photo albums. And here you see I've selected my photograph. And there it is. Okay, so yay, now we all have our picture up and we have our photo reference up. The first thing we're going to use as the fill tool, and I've kind of like enlarged your view here so you can see what you're doing. I want you to select the fill tool, which is part of your tool menu. And then down here below it, haha, <laughs> so sorry. Okay, and then down here below it, I've I'm sorry guys, I'm really nervous and I hope that passes momentarily. So the first tool we're going to use is the fill tool. And I've highlighted the three What you're looking at is also the three lines neck on the bottom here is the three lines which adjust your fill tool and I want you to have your opacity at 100%, your threshold at 80 and go ahead and say consider all layers on. I missed a step. I want you to be on your background layer, layer one. I want you to tap your canvas with your fill tool and because <laughs> this is way harder than it looks on TV. I'm going to try that again. If you have consider all layers on and you position yourself on the first layer, you've got it highlighted in blue. and I'm not sure that sense I'll repeat it. We are on layer one. We have our fill tool on at 100% with a threshold of 80. Tap your background with consider all layers on and it's just going to fill the area around the flower you'll have to tap in to fill. And I'm going through this here because I just really want you to understand what consider all layers means. If we do the exact same thing, but we put consider all layers off,
it will fill the entire canvas. And that, as you can see, is what's happened on layer one. And that's just fine. I want us to leave it that way. Excuse the, the red swirlies at the top of the screen. That doesn't mean anything. So what I want you to see here is that layer one is our background. We've left layer two bare and selecting colors from your reference photo fill in on the other layers. Layer three I want you to just put your your leaves so your buds the other green stuff in your picture. Actually I think that um you might need to turn layer one off for this to work correctly. Is anyone actually painting along at home? Okay, thank you guys. Um, so I'll just take it a little more step by step. Basically, I'm, I'm showing you what we're going to do, and I'm trying to go step by step, and then I'm going to do it with you. So you're going you're gonna to see it two times. This time we're just really, because it's hard for me to bring the layers up, and have you see what's on my layers. I've created these images so that you can see what I want to have on each layer. So layer one, our background, should be a solid green background and then I'd like you to poke the eye and turn it off. Layer two, I want you to skip layer two and leave it there. On layer three, I want you to just do the green parts of the picture, as in the stem and the bud. We're still using our fill tool with consider all layers. And I've actually got this picture set up so you shouldn't need to spend too much time on that. They should just fill in. On layer four, just pick up Dora, all done. On layer four, I want you to have your flower petals. On layer five is your bumblebee.
Okay, guys, I just had a little bit of a rearranging I had to do on this end.
Okay, so here you see a view of the sketch we're working on without the, the layers up, and you can see that you're not really going to select the shadow. The transparent part of the wings and the shadow are going to, at this time, match your petals. Also, you can choose any colors that you would like. You don't really want to go for exciting colors just yet because these are sort of our base colors. And I know you're all having fun. Because this is the fun, easy part, all set up for you. Just dot, 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 fill it in. I'm just putting this view back up so that you can see what should be on each layer. The great thing about putting everything on its own layer is we're not going to have to worry about going outside of the lines. Also, when we get done with this, there aren't going to be any lines. It's going to look like a regular painting. We're just working with lines here so that we can all be doing the same thing at the same time. <laughs> PK, you're making me laugh there. I'm going to guess that everybody's got their their layers set up like we see on the screen. And like I said, I'll repeat this with you after I go through it step by step. So you'll get it the second time if you're not getting it the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide. Just a moment, I think I've got the wrong slide up.
okay, just ignore the merge down that's highlighted here because we're not ready to merge down yet. What I want you to do here is select your second layer, which should be empty. And I want you to change the blend mode to on. So everybody's got layer 2 set to on, layer 2 set to on, you don't have anything there yet. But I can't find the correct slide at the moment, so we'll just go ahead with this. And then if you'll just bear with me a moment, I'm going to see if I can find the correct slide. I am all messed up. This is where I'd like us all to be at the moment. I want our bottom layer to be green, a solid green, and on. As in, poke the eye so that you can see the layer.
Layer two should be free. There shouldn't be anything on it just yet. But I want you to change the blend mode, which is in the column that you are seeing, from normal, which is the top, to on, which is at the bottom. I'm really lost, guys. I think I actually deleted a whole series of slides before slides before I started class. So I'm going to talk you through it. Select a, I want layer 2 to be live. That's the layer you're going to be working on, so it should be outlined in the blue. The blend mode should be set to on. And now we're going to change tools. We're not going to use the fill tool now. So I want you to change to the brush tool and I want you to select the second brush which is the soft fuzzy round brush. Then using your soft round brush, just randomly select colors from your reference image and make blobs of color in the background. You probably want to get your brush really large.
I actually can't use the microphone and leave the layers up at the same time and I've misplaced my pre-prepared slides on this bit so I'm gonna put the layers up and if you look at them layer 2 is set to on and it's got blobs of color on it Just choose random colors that, you know, there's basically only three or four colors there in the background. There's some dark green, there's some light green, there's a kind of a yellow sunlit green, and a brownish orange. And just arrange those on your layer two. The reason we had the reference image up is so that you can select colors from the reference image. This is also the part where it's really not important that you try and do anything perfectly. Yeah, that would be a good idea, PK, to just get those other layers out of the way. I actually have left them on before because it gives you an idea of, you know, we're painting a background and you're, you give an idea of what parts you can actually see. So turning off your upper layers is optional. With an on layer, when a layer is set to on, it only affects the layer beneath it. And Moonchild, if you've randomly erased a bit of layer one, go ahead and color it in. Actually, any color is fine. Our background, this is just the first step of us making our background, and we're basically creating the idea of an out-of-focus background. Also, the fact that we're using an on layer here with the background is we're just doing it that way because that's how we're going to work with the other layers. It's actually not even important for the background because the background is all there. We're not trying to stay within any kind of lines. Okay, yay, color blobs are down. And here's just a quick shot of what we're looking at. The white there, just don't worry about it. So this is what we should all be seeing at the moment. I want you all to still have layer 2 selected. I'm not sure if I was talking out loud, but one way or the other, 
I want you to select your filter and the filter The filter button is located just to the left and up from the merge down that's highlighted here. Now that you've selected filter, this is the This is your blobs, and this is what they look like once you select the filter button. The highlighter on color adjustment is just to point out that that is the name of the first filter on deck. Your color adjustment layer works with contrast, brightness, saturation, and hue, but we're not going to use that. We're going to touch the color adjustment button We're going to touch the color adjustment button so that we can select the blur filter. Okay, I'm going to try and talk you through this step by step for anyone that's confused. You know that on layer one we have our green, our solid green background. On layer two, which is our on layer, we have our blobs of color. Then I want you to choose the filter button, which is located with the series of choices you see on the bottom right of your layer menu. All of those choices, the load image, the merge down, the copy down, the filter, the transform, all are 
adjustments you can make to the active layer. So I would like you to choose the filter button which is going to put layer 2 on the filter screen. So it's going to be the only layer that you're looking at. When you choose filter, the color adjustment filter is the first one that comes up. Almost like it's the default filter. We're just going to skip right over that one. When you touch color adjustment, it will launch a menu of the other filters that are available. And I would like you to select the blur filter. And I would like you to slide that blur filter all the way across to the right. The blur filter starts at 10. What that's saying is that it's going to blur each pixel to a radius of 10 pixels. So if you had that one red pixel we saw in the beginning, it would make a bloom of red blurriness the size of 20 pixels in a circle because it goes 10 pixels out from the pixels that are affected. Now if you're wondering why I'm making a point of using the blur filter, I use the blur filter a lot. The blur filter, I don't normally slide it all the way across um, for maximum blur, but the blur filter I use almost every time before I merge down because it just softens what you're looking at. I usually slide it actually to the left to a lower number but it's when you leave everything you're working on as hard lines that it starts to look really like digital art. Yep, thank you Buttercup, thank you PK. When you're done blurring your picture, touch done and then it should bring you back to this screen and we actually should all be on the same page at the moment. Okay, now this is the slide I want you looking at with um, the blurred bubbly layer on layer 2 and your solid green layer on the bottom. Layer 2 is the active layer, so any button you touch that is in that lower section, the load image section, 
color fill, clear, filter, transform, copy down, and merge down. They just affect the blue highlighted layer. And I want you to select merge down. And then as you can see in this view, we have our blurred dots on our background. I want you to reselect the layer 2, which is still an on layer. So I had a nice slide like this for the brush tools, but I seem to have lost it. So now I want you to switch to your vector tool, and we're all working on layer 2 again. We would draw with our vector tool to create the idea of like grass and other flowers in the background and I'll show you that in just a moment. I think I'm back on track here. So we've merged down. I think I'm on, you know, back on track here. So we've merged down. These were some of the slides I was looking for before. So layer 2 is now down on layer 1. Here I'm presuming that we went through our vector steps. I'll show you that when we do the live painting. Um, but basically, when I did the vector work, I did it just the way I did the bloppy circles um, for the out-of-focus background. 
and I went through the same steps of blurring it before I merged it down. So what you're seeing here on layer two is that I have completed both the fuzzy blobs and the vector, blurred them, and I've brought them, after merging them down onto layer one, I'm bringing them back up to the number two position. Okay, now I want you to just copy down number two onto number one so that you have two copies of the background. And I'd like you to be sure that both layers are set to normal. One of them is probably set to on from the work we were doing just a minute ago. So I'm hoping that everybody's got two copies. Now I want you to change your top copy layer blend mode to overlay, which I've outlined in red over here. I'm sorry to skip over discussing the vector at the moment. We're almost through um, the pre-prepared slides that I was hoping would make it easier for you to see what was on which layer so that you could follow along with me. I'm actually going to go through this and color this picture again with you live where you're just watching me paint. And I'll talk while I'm doing it. And when I was, you know, just for your information, when I was drawing with the vector shapes, I was just drawing big sweeping things that look like blades of grass and stuff like that. And you don't have to use the vector tool. That's what I'm choosing here. You could use, for all of the steps where you're using a tool, you can pretty much use whatever you would like. For all of the steps where I'm asking you to change the layer blend mode, you want to follow those. So once the top layer is set to overlay and you drop it down onto the bottom layer, instantly your background is pretty cool looking. And I'll review that for you, Agent Era, just a moment. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm I'm losing you guys. I'm sure that, you know, when I do this again, it would be better. Um, I'm, I'm slightly less nervous than when I started, but I'm nervous. And then just looking at the picture that's up on the screen right now, layer two, we've made two copies of our background layer. We've made two copies of our background layer, and the top one we're going to change to overlay.
When I'm watching someone else's classes, the part that confuses me the most is what layer we're on, what layer we're supposed to be on, what we're supposed to be doing with that layer. And I was hoping to do a better job, but it's 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 harder than I expected. Okay guys, I want to just take you through what we've done with our layers here one more time and I'll try and be a little bit more clear. I should be able to do it quickly and still be clear. I'll just try and think harder. We're going back to where the bottom layer is green and we've blurred the blobs on our second layer which was set to on then we're going to merge our blobby layer down onto our background so that's all together And pre K is, you know, he's right there. Both our blobs and the work that we're going to do with the vector, um, we're going to take it through the blur process because this is our background and we really don't want that. We don't want to spend a lot of time on it. We want it to look good, but we don't want, you know, to sit and, you know, if you look at your reference image, we don't want to sit and copy each blade of grass because it's not important to the picture. You know, you can do it, and it might be interesting, but it would be a lot of work, and it probably wouldn't add very much to what we end up with. So where we are now, again, we're reviewing. We dropped our on layer down onto our bottom layer, and then we combined them into one layer, and we brought it back up to the second layer position. just so we could copy it down and have two copies of the background.
So we have two copies. We've changed our copy of that's positioned on layer two to overlay. And so as you can see, once you change that top layer to overlay, overlay exaggerates the light parts of your picture and exaggerates the dark parts of your picture, and it just looks good. And then you can just merge the overlay layer down onto your background. So now I'm going to put up just some typed words that are the idea of what we've done to the background and we're going to repeat that technique on each of the following layers by positioning an empty on layer above the layer we want to be working on. As far as I'm concerned, at this point in the picture, our background is done. Now we might touch it up with some details later when we're almost done with our picture, but not now. So every time you decide to work on one of your layers, and you know we've separated our background from our petals, from our bumblebee, each is on its own layer. To work on what is on that layer, you want to have a layer above it set to on. The on layer only affects what is on the layer below it. We started working on our on layer, which is layer two, with the brush, and we added blobs of color. Then we ran it through the filter blur process. On the background, we blurred it a lot. On other things, you know, you don't blur it so much. And you can just kind of imagine if we blurred the bumblebee a lot, it would be an orange blob in the middle of our picture and it wouldn't look like a bumblebee anymore. Now, after we're happy with what we've done, we've blurred it a bit, and by, you know, I almost always blur something before I merge it down, because even if you just blur it at two pixels, it will make the picture better in the end. It takes two seconds. I think it's worth the time. After you've blurred, go ahead and merge that down. In this case, because we worked on the background, merge it down onto your background layer. Then go back up and reselect layer 2, which was your on layer. And then have it added again with the background. Um, you know, working on the background with a different tool like the vector tool where you can draw the idea of leaves and stems and such. So basically with each layer that we're going to work on and you know today we started with the background you're going to go through these steps. You're going to draw what you might like on your background by working in an on layer above it. 
you can repeat this process as many times as you'd like. Actually, the really the least amount of work you do is probably going to look the best. Whenever you are happy with what you have got on your on layer, go ahead and blur it at least a little bit. Merge it down. If you're completely satisfied, you can stop right there. Okay, and in this case, we were working on our background. Once you are happy with your background, bring it up so that you can copy down and have two copies, both in normal blend mode, of your background. Now you've got two copies of your background. You're happy with this background, so you made two copies of it. Both layers were on normal. I want you to change the top layer to overlay and then go ahead and merge it down and move it above your bud layer which was the next layer up for action. I'm going to switch to a live sketch and I'm just going to go ahead and do what I just took you step by step through and I'm going to do it quickly and it's going to make perfect sense because it's just going to make perfect sense. And go ahead and take a five minute break while I find my stylus. So we're going to start again at... Um, We'll start on the 30. It's 23 now. Take a seven minute break and we'll start on the 30. So the background stripes that you're looking at there in this picture, Nobby, those are the work that I did with the vector, and I'm going to just go ahead and show you that live in a minute. And I didn't smudge anything. I just used blur.
What we're going to do now is we're just going, you can go ahead and start recording again, Schwabi. What we're going to do now is, you know, I'll, it'll take me the couple minutes to get stuff up and going. I'm just going to paint the picture for you just the way I told you to do it. I'm hoping this will take really less than 20 minutes. Okay, I'm starting from the beginning. I've got my template on layer two. Select my bottom layer and I'm going to color fill it green. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this layer off so it doesn't confuse me while I fill in the rest of the picture. And of course I'm going to slide this, this stencil up and out of my way. So now I am on layer three and I'm going to fill in So now I'm on layer three and I'm going to fill in the green parts of my sketch and then I did a little whoops there. I want to have consider all layers with my fill tool turned back on. My fill tool should be at 100% and this was working well for me at home with uh, the threshold at 80. So on layer three, I've just filled in my green foliage. I'm using my reference photo to select colors from. You don't need to worry too much about the colors that you're using because basically you can paint over them. What you're doing is you're isolating what you're working on onto its own layer. Layer 6 and I'm going to color in the center of the flower. With the fill tool, if you miss where you're aiming for, just, you know, undo it and try again.
and I see I missed my bud, so I'm going to go back to layer four where my flower is, and I'll catch that. And as you can see, my background color is really dark, which maybe isn't ideal, but let's see how it turns out. I've selected layer 2 to work on. This is the layer immediately above my background layer and the on layer only affects the layer immediately below it. And I'm going to color my background like I told you to do which was to select the brush tool and make blobs of color. So there's my blobs of color, and I'm going to go ahead and blur that by selecting Filter Blur. Now I'm going to merge this down onto my background layer. So I'm merging layer 2, which is my on layer, right down onto my background layer. Sorry, I didn't see Schwabi's question. How did you get your outline so smooth? You mean the, uh, the outline that I traced from my photograph? I just did it carefully. With um, Mostly I just used the soft round brush tool and traced around the edges. It, it actually took a little time. And thanks for poking me with the questions, PK. I need that. I've got my background all on one layer and because I started with such a dark green that just looks like too much to me. So I'm going to use transform and I'm going to blow it up a little bit so that it's not so dramatically colored. So I just used transform on my background to enlarge it so that it it's more of a subtle, diffuse looking background. Now I'm back up on layer two. 
I'm over this this splotchy background that I have and I'm going to use the vector tool to add some idea of other plants in the background. All right, so I've just laid in a bunch of blobby vector stuff. You see that you don't have to think too much about what you're doing, and you don't have to try and make it pretty. It works, you know, nice if the gradient is on because it looks more random, like nature. So all of this vector work is on layer 2 and on layer above my background layer. The background layer was already settled in with the round blobs. And now I'm going to go through the same step of blurring my vector layer 2, which is set to on. And I could repeat that any number of times till I get a background that makes me happy. And I'll just show you, for example, what happens if I just blur it again. Okay, and that looks better to me. I'm pretty happy with it. In real life, I'm incredibly persnickety, <laughs> so I would probably still be playing with this for a while. And I'm going to go ahead and merge that down onto, I've blurred it, so I'm going to merge it down onto my background layer. And now my entire background is on a single layer. And I'm going to take advantage of the fact I'd still like to, well, no, I'll leave it. I'll leave it so that we can get through this quickly. Um, so my next step is to make a duplicate copy of my background. Duplicate copy of my background. I've made sure that they're both set to normal. And now I've changed the top copy to overlay, 
and that's just like way too much for me. So what I would do to tone this down is I can just lower the opacity of that layer until it looks good to me. So to tone down my overlay effect in this instant, I lowered the opacity of the top overlay layer to 50%, but now I'm just going to go ahead and merge it down onto my background. foliage which was on layer 3. So as far as I'm concerned the background is done for this part of the painting and we would maybe play with it some more in a bit. So now I'm going to show you the same process just all over again. I'm going to reset my free layer to on and I'm going to reposition it over my my foliage. So now I'm working on the, the greenery and I have gone back to my soft round brush and I am painting on an on layer above the green stuff I'm going to paint on right now. And I'm finding here that I'm going to want to work with a much lower opacity than I did for the background. One of the really cool things I'm going to do here is I'm going to select that very dark green color right off my background and I'm going to paint on my stem and it's going to make it so the stem just doesn't stand out the way it does. It's going to look like it's coming in from somewhere, but it's just not going to be, you know, like a outline coloring book page. And so when I'm doing my foliage here, I am painting with a color that's darker than the green I started with and a color that's lighter than the green I started with, just to, you know, make create a mix of colors there. And as you can see, I'm really not thinking too hard about this because I'm on because I'm on my on layer, I'm not directly affecting my painting. My point is, if I don't like what I did, all I've got to do is clear the entire on layer and try again. 
But we're going to say we're happy with that. So now I'm going to go through that filter blur process again. So you get an idea, you know, it's not ideal. I would spend more time on this, but I'm just going to go ahead and move along because it's, it's getting late, but you get the idea of what I'm doing, I think. And so, because I'm happy with my leaves, for this point in the picture, and they're on my on layer, I'm just going to go ahead and merge that down onto directly onto the leaves. So now it's all going to be on, it will all be on one layer. Next, I've slid my on layer above my petal, so now I'm going to do a little bit of petal work. And just using my soft round brush, you can use any tools you want to. Because we're using an on layer above the petals, no matter what I do, it's just going to be on the petals. Even when I blur what's on the petals, the only part that's going to, even though if it blurs outside of the lines, the only part that goes down onto the layer below it will be within the lines. And there's where you realize you're not on the layer you meant to be on. I need to be on the on layer that's directly above my petals. You can see I just throwed some random color in there just because. Because it looks pretty. It's pale, so it doesn't stand out as something that shouldn't be there. I like what I've done on my petals. This is all on my on layer, so I'm going to blur that again. Okay, and that's it, guys. That's basically, you would just keep doing this as you work your way up through the layers by working on an on layer over your work. And if I wasn't trying to be speedy, I would spend more time fussing about these things, but they really don't need to be exact at this point in the picture. What we're doing is we're just 
laying in the idea of something to work from where we can refine the details. So, yep, that's it. Class is over. <laughs> you, oh, you know what? Let me show you one more thing. Yeah, Shabby, cut that before I did that. I did something wrong. I'm tired. Um, and I would just like to know if anybody's got any questions.